so I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know who this word is for. Um, but I was um, awakened out of my sleep to this word. Um, and God had spoken and ministered to me. Daniel um, chapter 4 verse 27. And um, basically in this chapter, um, King Nebuchadnezzar had had a disturbing dream and he needed um someone to interpret his dream for him because God was speaking to him but he was unable to interpret what God was saying now I know everybody should like be familiar with the whole story of King Nebuchadnezzar like how he struggled with pride and, um, you know, he was a very prideful king um, and he was a blessed king, but he was a very prideful. So um, God had to humble him. And I believe he was sent out for about seven years um, to the desert and, you know, just transformed into basically an animal. Um, and so that was his punishment to um, humble him. And whenever he returned back from um, being basically having like a reprobate mind type situation. Um, he praised God through the humiliation that was brought upon him for his judgment. So, um, I'm going to read the script. The script says, um, therefore, O King, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Um, break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy, excuse me, to the oppressed, that there may be perhaps um, a lengthening of your prosperity, that they, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. So basically, um, the Lord had, um, you know, let Daniel interpret that dream. And Daniel had advised to him that if he repent and, you know, show mercy to the oppressed and, you know, be righteous instead of be being sinful and prideful, that maybe that this could, you know, prolong the judgment that God was going to bring upon him because his judgment was definite. It was a definite judgment. So that's just how merciful God is. Um, even a, even in judgment, he'll give you time to repent. But King Nebuchadnezzar was so prideful um, that he, I guess he thought God was playing because he was boasting um, into, you know, who he was as a king, you know, talking crazy like he normally does. And I don't have my Bible open right now. I kind of wish I did because I wanted to quote the things that he was saying. Um, but he was just talking crazy and prideful. And all of a sudden, his judgment hit him. Like as soon as he opened his mouth and started talking crazy, um, that's it. That's when his judgment hit him. So whoever this is for, the Lord is saying, you know, you know, he's being merciful to you, but apparently you, you keep talking crazy. So, you know, you keep talking crazy and suddenly your judgment is going to come upon you. But if you repent, then he'll um, postpone your judgment, which is cool because, you know, that's just the mercy of God. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to reap what you sow. But, you know, it's nice to know that God has that kind of mercy on people who can be so cruel, you know, because there's some people out there that can be very cruel. And, you know, we as people, sometimes we think we are the judge, but at the end of the day, we're not the judge. God is the judge. And so a lot of times as people, we have to get in alignment with the mind of God as it relates to judging people. Because in this season, I've been hearing so many people make excuses for their sins um, based off of the fact about what this person is doing or what that person is doing. And I kind of wanted to touch bases on that in this particular word, just because, you know, that just goes to show you how much when you face judgment, you're not going to be facing judgment based off of what somebody else did. That's just like Adam and Eve. 
Adam ate that apple just like Eve did. And, and everybody tried to place blame. If you read the book of Genesis, you will see how, you know, when God came to visit Adam and Eve, you know, the first thing they were saying was, you know, they were deceived by the serpent. You know, there was blame placed and no accountability. So people, we have to be accountable for our sins. I know, you know, it's easy to place blame on people because I've been there before, before I got saved. Um, the first thing that I used to say was, oh, well, the I did this because this person did that. And I never really been the type of person to do things because of what somebody else had done. So if I did anything out of emotion, it had to be somebody who was very close to me to make me say, OK, I did this because this person did that. Because me, like, I'm not going to lie. I do have like a nonchalant attitude towards people who are not close to me. Like people don't understand the main reason why people can't get under my skin is is because if you're not somebody who is like in my circle, you're not going to get under my, scene, under my skin. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you say about me. I have a limit to caring about what the people close to me think, especially now more than ever that God has shown me, you know, how this walk with Christ is, how you can start off with somebody and then end up having to cut them off. So I'm very, very, you know, conscious about the fact that, um, I love my circle, but I don't mind cutting anybody in my circle off if they're not walking, you know, with Christ, how they need to be walking with Christ. If they're not being righteous, if they're not holding themselves accountable for their actions and, you know, things like that and holding me accountable as well. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't sin and say, oh, I'm doing this because, you know, somebody else is doing it or you can't say you know, it doesn't matter that I'm doing this because look at what this other person is doing. Like, I mean, come on now, let's just be real. Once you are a real true born again Christian, you should know better because you know that if that sky cracks open today or tomorrow and you have to stand in front of God, you're not going to be able to tell that to God. You can tell that to all these humans. And I had to learn this myself. I had to learn that, you know, when I did my personal walk with God, I had to learn, okay, it was when I started accepting accountability for my own actions, for just even the people who were close to me, you know, just being held accountable for how I responded, you know, meaning don't respond out of sin. Don't let what somebody do to you make you respond out of sin. So, you know, God had to show me that. And it took, you know, a long time for me to grasp that because I didn't have anybody that was like teaching me that, you know, I was going to church, but I wasn't having nobody really teach me this. Th these are things that weren't really taught, you know, in church. I didn't hear this a lot and I didn't hear this like, you know, taught and explained and how important it is, you know, as a Christian to, um, to not, um, you know, just basically to take accountability, you know, for your own actions and see the thing about it is, um, there's a lot of people who are saying that they're saved and they're really not saved. So they're going around calling themselves, you know, you know, they have all these titles and I'm not going to even be specific. We, I'm going to be good today, but they have these titles, you know, and I'm not even necessarily talking about the fivefold ministry. I'm just speaking of people in within ministry who going around here playing church, you know, acting like they goody two shoes spreading the gospel and they're far from God. So to hold that kind of um, community type of um um, reputation, but behind the scenes, you know, you're going around here placing the blame of your sins, like making it say, okay, it's okay that I do this because I know that this other person who doesn't even live in your house, who you're not even accountable for, you know what I'm saying? You don't have no dealings with this person per se, but because you know something about them, you, and then when you get exposed, you know, you want to say, well, this person is doing this too. And that person is doing this too. Like what is up with that? Be for real. Like to me, I'm just being real. 
it sounds like a two year old because at the end of the day, at least for me, you know, I allow the people who who are close to me to affect me so I can understand that more than anything. And I'm not excusing that because clearly I had to be checked by God myself about that. But to allow to to have a the type of mindset that somebody that is not in your household, you know, that you don't have no dealings with and you think that you can go out there and do something to somebody and then say, oh, well, this person's doing it, too. This person is nothing like you think they are like. That does not excuse the fact that you are going to be held accountable for what you've done. So I don't know the mindset of people and why that they think that it's okay. I don't understand at all. Maybe it's like some spiritual law type stuff that y'all got going on. Because for me, my spiritual laws comes from the Bible. And so... We all know the true, real spiritual laws, but at the end of the day, my thing is you're going to be held accountable for your actions. So God is just basically saying, if you repent, you'll get postponed, but your judgment is final. Be well, people. I love you. Drink your water and obey God.